Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. I'm really excited because today I'm beginning a brand new series that I've been looking forward to teaching for a very, very long time. And that's talking about financial stewardship. I know that when I share the title of this, many of you aren't excited about this. There is a real prejudice against teaching on money and specifically, I think, against um, media, television ministers teaching on money because there have been a lot of abuses of it. And I mean, many times people take things from the Word of God and manipulate it and promise that if you'll send in $1,000, this person's going to be... Uh, born again, all your prayers are going to be answered and they, in a sense, are hawking and selling the gospel and, and in exchange for your finances, you get all of these breakthroughs. And there is a principle here that when you take a step of faith and believe God, it doesn't matter if it's in the area of finances or whatever, that it opens up doors and, and things happen. And I'll be talking about some of that. But anyway, the reason I'm saying this is I'm aware that there is a prejudice against um, ministers, especially television ministers teaching on finances. I run the risk of some people just turning me off and saying, I will not listen to this. Um, you know, I pray that you don't do that. It would really be bad for you if you did. I really believe that because I'm going to be sharing things that have just revolutionized my life. I've seen them revolutionize the lives of other people. And I'm going to be presenting things, in my opinion, from a different perspective on finances than probably what you've heard before. And I think that uh, if you would devote the time to this and receive this teaching, that it is not only going to set you free in the area of finances, but I believe it could make a huge difference in your entire relationship with the Lord, in your destiny, in all of the things that God has planned for you. As a matter of fact, as a way of introducing this, you know what I would like to do is just to play a little video that our television department has put together that we're calling Financial Breakthroughs. And I'd like to play this video about the Beretta family and uh, have you see this and then I'll come back at the close and we'll introduce this teaching on financial stewardship with this video. In 1999, I was actually the mortgage man. I ended up becoming a subprime mortgage team manager. Within a year, I was the leading salesman. I had profit sharing and everything else. In the dot-com boom, I was stoked. I was in position to make a lot of money. I just knew what money could do. And, and I know Kurt, and I know his, um, his appetite for money, and I know his appetite for excess. In, in 2004, I had this mortgage thing going for me so well. I was making six figures. I ended up going on my own business. And at that point, I just started looking at real estate in a way where I can cash in, make a lot of money. And I had a real estate license, so it was very easy for me to bring the real estate business in and do the mortgage at the same time. I started with my first house. It was a fixer-upper, built it up leveraged it to another house and to another until I had at one point in time close to three million in just real estate that I personally had in my name. At that point I thought I was in the top of the world. We lived in a very beautiful area in South Florida, Boca Raton, and uh, you know you had to make money to maintain a lifestyle there. We did everything we could to make as much as we can. And because we were making money didn't mean we were saving money. We were just spending what we were making. Uh, I, I noticed that the drinking was starting heavily and I noticed that going out was a lot and it just started taking a toll on the marriage. We worked very hard for the first several years to get a blended family, you know, together. And our kids as far as what they did, they had to move from house to house to house, change friends, change environments. Well, my daughter was now getting into a lot of things that, was, that I could see was going to be progressively a problem. My brother and I were very, very close growing up. He was four years older than me, and he was my everything. He protected me. Um, he was my stability in the house. I could always talk to him about everything. And when they needed us, we were not there. I just kind of lost trust in my parents. 
she was a straight-A student. Um, she was starting to now skip school and, you know, all those things. I got raped when I was 15, and I, after that, I didn't feel like I had anybody to go to. I couldn't talk to my parents because I didn't want to burden them more than what they were already going through. And in 2005, then we had a very bad hurricane in, uh, in the South Florida area, and we were out of electricity for several weeks. Um, our business literally shut down overnight. And I became real cocky. And when the business started getting a little squirrely, I, like in Texas Hold'em, went all in. I did all kinds of things that I knew was going to help people make money in this business, and especially myself. In 2006, there was the mortgage implosion. All those subprime mortgage lenders started going belly up. And the economy then crashed, and we were one of the first areas to get hit hard. The banks that I had, nine or 10 banks, they all collapsed and closed their doors the same week. And I had well over a million dollars worth of loans with those banks. All my commissions that I drew from were evaporated. I had no money saved. I had already went through everything. And now I had my parents in the game. So everything that we had had and everything that we had, uh, we were lavishing in literally was just pulled from under us um, overnight. As far as a relationship with God at that time, it just mattered that I had a Sunday service that I can attend in the Catholic faith. Because I said, look, I'm going to church on Sundays. You guys can either come with me or not come with me. I had completed all my sacramental responsibilities as a Catholic. I had never, you know, committed a mortal sin, you know, so I knew I was okay. And if I did, I'd go say confession. I literally, I turned away from my faith completely. So we decided, let's go to Charlotte. Let's make a fresh start of it. Tried to make it again working as an employee. Having been self-employed, working as an employee was a shot to my ego across the bow, and it was painful. Uh, my husband at that point had gotten a job when we went up there with a mortgage company, and a month later, they, they let him go. At this point, when I started losing that career and had to switch back to an old way of doing things, that was my fallback in the car business, I felt like I was going backwards. Uh, Kurt now was going into even a steeper depression, you know, and drinking, and now he's becoming, he was just becoming verbally um, abusive, and it, it, it was just not a good situation. He came to my house for Thanksgiving without his wife, you know, and uh, I found that kind of odd, but I know my brother had lost everything. That's when we spent some time together in my garage, him and his two kids, and, uh, and the Holy Spirit just came over me, and I just started to read his mail and tell him exactly what's going on. And I was terrified, because he was my older brother, <laughs> and I think that was the beginning of uh, something new for him, because he finally, for a moment here, he actually humbled himself and listened to his younger brother, the crazy born again. It hit a soft spot in his heart, where uh, he knew that he didn't have any answers, and that he had to deal with his character and, and, and God was going to be his only way out. You now I embraced him and sent him off back to the Carolinas to his wife and, uh, and I said, look, you know, if, uh, if it's good for you, you can stay here at my house and I'm just going to minister to you and we're just going to talk about the word every day because that's what you need. We moved a couple of different times and the last time that we moved, um, Kurt, I had developed a, a husband for hire business several months later. One night, uh, my daughter had uh, basically attacked me. We got into it really bad to the point where I think I hit her and it just got really rough and I just left. And I got a phone call from the lady that Kurt was working at her house. I ended up at a customer's home when I they offered me a cocktail at the end of the job. I took a cocktail and then she went to get her kids, said you can have some more, I refilled. She called me and said, well, before I call the police, I wanted to call you, but your husband's passed out on my couch. Um, he asked me for one drink and he drank the whole bottle. I didn't know what to do. Do I go after my daughter or do I pick up my husband? I chose my husband. So I went to go pick Kurt up and he was in fact passed out on this woman's couch. So at that point, I, that was my breaking point. I recognized I had to do something. I told him, I said, you need to pack your stuff up uh, and you need to go find whatever you're looking for because it's just not here anymore. I took whatever I could fit in my U-Haul 
and I drove down to Florida. On my way to my brother's when decided to call him about five hours away and knowing I was gonna get there well after midnight, and I said, I, I just can't do this again. I felt like I was going backwards to childhood. And I said, I'll call you in the morning. I pulled in a rest stop just to gather my thoughts. The very next morning, went to the next exit on the highway, came down the road, and lo and behold, this storage facility right here was no more than two miles from where I had spent the night, and, and it ended up becoming my new home. He um, showed up to rent a unit. Kurt was, um, he was, he was separated from his wife and his children. I don't think he knew anybody. The first couple of nights here was like hide and seek, trying to keep from the cameras around here and trying to make it where no one suspected I was living here. I didn't know I was gonna end up living here as long as I did. I would be on the phone with my brother as much as I could just trying to keep some kind of sense of sanity about me. See, I knew what was killing him. Coming out from the same religious background, I know the guilt, condemnation, and shame was just eating him up from the inside out. And he more and more tried to bring encouragement to me to realize that God was the answer. And I didn't understand his God. I only understood my God, which was the Catholic faith. And I went right to the church locally here this is gonna work out. He's gonna to go to Florida, he's gonna to go to AA, he's gonna to go to SA, he's gonna to go to NA, he's gonna to go to A, every A program there was, and he was gonna be fine. I have the opportunity to minister the gospel, the truth to him over and over, all day and all day. My brother hands me a book called Self-Centeredness, The Root of All Grief by Andrew Walmack. I got to a place where I couldn't believe how self-centered I really was and how this book described everything that was going on in my life at that time. I go through this booklet and it leaves me now with more questions than answers. I turn to my brother repeatedly and he guides me to a website, Andrew Walmack Ministries, Audio Teachings. He points me to a place called There. And I click on that, it was my first teaching, and then I realized where I was in my journey with God. I was there. People cannot live in storage units. It's against the law. I had actually taken on a rainy day, I said, I'm gonna do something good for these people. That bathroom needs to be cleaned up, and I redid it. And wouldn't you know that that little deed turned into, he turned around when I was getting ready to get thrown out and said, I'm going to put you in a house. It was so cold that winter that I, I couldn't have him live here. So I offered a house that I had that was vacant. I have a house, a rental apartment on the beach that needs some painting and sprucing up. I'm trying to get a renter in there and it's not renting, it needs to be cleaned up. You go in there and you live for free. And I moved out of this place went over there and continued my teachings. I made it like a prescription, like a doctor. Okay, this is what you need to listen to. I know exactly what you're talking. Go to the website, click over here, go over there. You gotta listen to that. Whose righteousness is it? And I immediately took my iPod and I downloaded all 250 something teachings at that time and just started going over them every single day as I painted and as I did everything I could to, to just keep myself busy and keep myself with some kind of an income. He calls me one day, he goes, okay, Scott, I, I can't take this no more. I come to the revelation that I need to hear this word all day long. I mean, I just need to be on the phone with this. Kurt. He says, I, I want you to do this full time with me. I, he was not able to do that. So I told him, well, if that's the case, I'm going to have to go to the school. So I prepared myself to go to Colorado. So while he's, while we're talking on the phone, he's clicking through the website and it said, Jacksonville campus now open. <laughs> I had to rewind, I couldn't believe it. And when that thing hit, it's like the whole world came together in a puzzle, like a gear that just fit perfectly. Now I know why I'm in Jacksonville. And it was the same exit he got off at, you know, months earlier and God just laid it out for him. The first time I talked to Kurt Barreto, 
uh, he told me he was separated from his wife, he had gone through a bunch of stuff, and he was just laying it all on the line and just turning it all over to God. Within five minutes, I had everything figured out on how I was going to attend. I would sit in front of the television and listen and absorb this information, and we would break out into little groups and talk, and we would have praise and worship. People would come up to me, lay hands on me. Wow, it was like filled with the Spirit and with God every day. The biggest change that I saw with Kurt is the transition from self-dependence to beginning to depend on God. And, and God was basically telling me, it's me that's doing all these things. Now instead of calling me uh, complaining or calling me with needing help, he's just calling me with testimony after testimony. At one point I had spoken to him and he said, no, I'm, I, I, you know, my brother Scott introduced me to Andrew Womack and I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to really work towards that. And I thought, oh no, 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 the, he's not Catholic. My wife would have nothing to do with Jacksonville. So he starts visiting up there on weekends and uh, calling me for advice. This is the way she's behaving. I don't understand this. I said, Kurt, just, just don't preach at her, but just say, this is what I'm doing because the word says this. And just let that living word go in her ears in her ears because once it's in her head she's not going to be able to get it out because it's live. <laughs> the only one thing I clung to was that anything is possible with God and that the Spirit doesn't need my help and that actually I made a pretty bad Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was a much better job at getting my wife's heart where it needed to be so long as I just administered the Word. I actually remember waking up in the middle of the night and writing down a little passage and God said to me these words. He said, you're not going to tell your wife anything. You're going to show her by your living example. And I could see a softness. I saw his body physique changed. I saw his eyes were different. I saw his temperament was different. That doesn't happen with AA programs and SA programs. I know that because I've been through so many of them with people. I knew that there had been something that had touched his heart, and I saw that in him, and I was happy. My dad basically put up an offer for me to spend my summer in an RV with him. And I get permission to have her come with me for the two weeks that she's here to school. She goes through one night, and she's like taken back. She's almost crying. The people at Karis there, were awesome. They just all had that same, you know, just sense of peace and contentment with life that I had never seen in anybody. In a two week time period, we had more interaction and more love and affection and, and meaningful dialogue than I've had for our entire 18 years of life. So I had to send her back home. That's what shocked me more than my husband was that my daughter changed and we actually could be in the same room together and, and love one another and speak to each other. We didn't have that. My wife still was very reluctant. It was my second year coming up. I had to make a decision. And I said to her, I says, look, I have to stay and do this. This is a life or death thing for me. This is more than just Bible college now. My mom decided that she didn't want to be alone everything just miraculously came back together. I didn't think you could unscramble eggs, but reality, God can unscramble anything. We've made it through the entire second year of school together. He, he was bringing his teachings into the house, which they were biblical teachings, you know, but I was not converting. I am not convert. I am Catholic. I'm going to stay Catholic. I finally graduate. My wife is ecstatic about that. Everyone comes to the graduation. And then there's the summer family Bible conference. God really put it in my heart that I should come to Colorado to school. And she got a job transfer from where she was. And I got a promotion right when I got here so I could pay for school. Everything that I prayed for to get my wife to see the Holy Spirit and to take the baptism of the Holy Spirit, came together 
in one week at the Bible conference. Before we even went to the conference and everything, I said to Kurt, look, do not expect anything. I'm going, I'm gonna listen, I'm, I'm supporting you. She had a Bible that she scribbled through nonstop. After the first day, I'm like, there might be something here. I, 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 kinda, I kinda like it, you know? I, I love this speaker and I really like that speaker. And, but you know, the first two days, the praise and worship went on and just nodding my head and there's no way my arms are going up. Well, about the third day, I'm hallelujahing around there and I'm up on the, you know, in front of the stage and, you know, I pulled Andrew aside one day and I said, I just want to thank you. And I got very emotional, you know, and I said to him, I said, I just want to thank you because you saved my life. You saved my marriage. You saved my daughter. I go, and you don't know how many people that you touch. You really don't. And I, his eyes welled up, my eyes welled up, and we're both like, you know, and he said, well, thank you. I said, no, I, I don't, I'm not looking for your thanks. I just want you to know that there are so many people that you are touching that you'll never know. And that's the gift of God, is to touch those you'll never meet. It was the very last day of the conference. By herself, she stood up, walked up, received baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And my mom being Catholic has never even heard of that. and We have just been completely blessed in ways beyond understanding. Our marriage has reached a new level and it's continuing. I just thought, you know what? It, it's just a testimony to the way God works. You know, and it's not that I'm not Catholic anymore and it's not that you're not who you are anymore. It's just that there's so much to learn and there's so much to teach others and that's where we are today. After the Bible conference, my wife was totally elated, plugged into conferences, and in the secular world, we were a tag team of dealership presentations, and we worked together, and... You know, we're gonna have our traveling ministry, and I want so much to go to school. We're, we're taking the godfollowersministries.com to the level where we'll be installing discipleship evangelism, the need for evangelism, everything to do with bringing God's word, the true gospel, to where people can get an, enough information to become deeply rooted with the word and bear much fruit. I know there's a lot of people that together my husband and I can touch, you know, to make a difference. From a Florida mansion to a storage unit, from a beach house to a motor home. Kurt Barreto learned that no matter where he found himself, God stood at the door of his heart, knocking. Now that he's opened that door through Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College, the entire Barreto family is enjoying a feast of blessing and abundance. Isn't that powerful? I tell you what, my eyes welled up again just seeing what God is doing in people's lives. And I want to share with you that regardless of what your financial situation is, and it doesn't have to be limited to finances, as you saw with the Barrettos. It was their entire family. Their whole lives were coming apart. Whatever situation you find yourself in, God can unscramble eggs. God can fix whatever problem you find yourself in. And, you know, the statistics show that the majority of things that people struggle over in their relationships is finances. That uh, it's just a terribly oppressive thing. And God has an answer to this. And this is what we're going to start talking about, is about financial stewardship. And I believe this is going to make a difference in your life. I've got a brand new book out on this, first time that we've ever showed it and offered it. We've got a study guide that goes along with it. We've got a CD set, a DVD set as seen on TV that is really going to minister to you. And I also believe that there's a lot of people that were touched today. Hope came into your heart through listening to Kurt and uh, Lisa talk about what God has done for them. And we have a number on your screen, and I'd like to encourage you to call and let someone pray with you. They can give you these materials that we're talking about, but they can also pray with you, and you could begin coming out of this situation that you find yourself in. So I encourage you to please call. We have a number there on your screen. Receive these materials and have someone pray with you. Meet world changers Dannon and Amanda Winter, 
Karis Bible College graduates, class of 2002. Today, they're founders and directors of Karis Bible College, Florida, with locations in Jacksonville and Orlando. What the school does is it changes people. It transforms them from the inside out. And once those people get changed, then not only do they have a better quality of life, but they can go out and affect other people. We invite you to check out Karis Bible College, Florida. Go to www.floridacbc.org for complete information. Change your life. Change the world. The story you saw in today's program is included along with five additional testimonies on the brand new Financial Breakthroughs DVD. This DVD includes six true stories that could change your financial future and help you experience the freedom of turning your finances over to God. It's available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Or you can get the Financial Breakthroughs DVD as part of the Prosperity Package. This package includes the Financial Stewardship Series on your choice of CD or DVD as seen on our daily TV program, the book, the study guide, and the Financial Breakthroughs DVD. The entire package has a catalog value of $114, but today you can get the Prosperity Package for a gift of $85 or more. Make sure to specify the CD or DVD when you order. I have learned that uh, nothing is mine, so everything is God. Uh, what God has given me is not meant for just me, but it's meant for people around me. I didn't realize that everything belonged to God and that everything I had was a gift, and I was a steward, a watcher over what I had. The first audio teaching in today's series is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give, but if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this first CD titled, What is a Steward, Free of Charge? You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. Helpline hours are Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. If the lines are busy, you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awmi.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Merritt Island, Florida this Wednesday, April 11th, in Orlando, Florida for a Gospel Truth Seminar April 12th through the 14th, in Colorado Springs, Colorado for the Better Way to Worship Conference April 25th through the 27th, and in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma May 5th through the 6th. He'll also be in Atlanta, Georgia for a Gospel Truth Seminar May 10th through the 12th at the Solid Rock of Atlanta May 13th in the UK for the Grace and Faith Family Conference June 1st through the 4th and in Colorado Springs for the annual Summer Family Bible Conference July 2nd through the 6th. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awmi.net. 